more and more people travelled on the Patrick Hills Railway. Everyone had to work very hard indeed. Dirty trucks, dirty sidings, ugh, put in James. Silence, ordered a well-known voice. Let me tell you that an engine for goods work will arrive from Scotland tomorrow. The fat controller stared. Did you say two engines, Inspector? Yes, sir. Then send the other back at once. Certainly, sir. The two engines are exactly alike, sir, and have no numbers. They say they lost them on the way. We'll soon settle that nonsense, he said grimly. The two engines greeted him cheerfully. I hear you've lost your numbers, he said. How did that happen? The mourner slowly slipped it off, sir. You can who it is. What are your names? Donald and Dougie, sir. Good, he said. Then your controller can tell me which of you is which. Oh, he, he didn't kin our names, sir. How could he? We only given ourselves names when we lost our numbers. One of you, said the fat controller, is playing truant. I shall find him out and send him home. Inspector, he ordered, give these engines numbers and set them to work. Soon workmen came to give the twins their numbers. Donald was nine and Douglas ten. No nine and ten, smiled the inspector. Here's Duck. He'll show you round before you start work. The twins enjoyed themselves and were soon friends with Doug. They didn't mind what they did. They tackled good trains and coaches easily. We like it high in here, said Donald. That's good, smiled Duck. But take my tip. Watch out for Gordon, Henry and James. They're sure to try some nonsense. Get a fash yourself, chuckled Douglas. We'll soon settle them. Donald and Douglas had deep-toned whistles. They sound like buses, said Gordon. Or oh, ships, sniggered Henry. Tugboat Annie, laughed Gordon. Ha, ha, ha. Donald and Douglas cruised quietly up, one on each side. You wouldn't be making fun of us, would you now? Asked Donald. Gordon and Henry jumped. Uh, no, said Gordon. No, 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 certainly not, said Henry. That's fine, said Douglas. Now just mind the both of you, and keep it that way. That was the way Gordon and Henry kept it. Every day, punctually at 3.30, Gordon steams in with the express, and is full of people from England, Wales and Scotland. There is also a special coach for passengers travelling to places on Thomas's branch line. One afternoon, Douglas helped Duck in the yard, while Donald waited to take a good train to the other end of the line. As Duck was busy arranging Donald's trucks, Douglas offered to take away Gordon's coaches. Douglas was enjoying himself, when an awful thought struck him. I hope the fat controller doesn't find out I shouldn't be here. I couldn't abide going back. He worried so much over this that he forgot about Thomas's special coach. He pushed it with the others into the carriage siding. Then ambled along and joined Donald in the water column. Soon Thomas came fussing. Where's my coach? Coach? asked Donald. What coach? My special coach that Gordon brings for me. It's gone. I must find it. He bustled away. Lost six, said Douglas. I'm more than a stowed the special coach with the others. 
You see that? exclaimed Donald's driver. A mob of angry passengers erupted from the siding. Now listen, said Douglas's driver. We'll change tenders. Then a wire with ye, Donald, and take yon goods. Dinner flash about us. Quick now, do as I say. But Donald, with Douglas's tender, number 10, was out and away with the goods before they came near. Douglas and his driver waited with innocent expressions. Ah, said the fat controller, number nine. And why have you not taken the goods? May a tender is a wire, sir. The driver showed him the tender, still uncoupled. I see. He turned to the passengers. Here, yeah, gentlemen, please accept my apologies. The matter will be investigated. Good afternoon, gentlemen. The fat controller watched them till they climbed the station ramp. His shoulders twitched. He swung round suddenly. Douglas, he rapped. Why are you masquerading with Donald's tender? Thank you.